Hi everyone, in this uh, new topic on two point, uh, topic 2 on inequalities, I'll be introducing to you the solving of inequalities by analytical approach for this 2.1. Now before I go into solving of these inequalities, let me go through some basic properties of inequalities. So the first one is given in a handout says that if A is greater than B and B is greater than C, well, of course, A, B, and C are real numbers. That means A is greater than C. Okay? So if A is greater than B, and B is greater than C, so naturally A will be greater than C. So that is the first inequality. The second property of inequality says that if A is greater than B, if you are to add a constant C to both sides of the inequality, okay, or to subtract both sides of the inequality by the same value, is not going to affect the inequality sign. Okay? So you add C on both sides or you subtract C on both sides, it doesn't matter. In a third situation, if A is greater than B and C is greater than D. Okay? So if you add a big one of the two numbers together, it will be larger than the, the sum of the smaller numbers. Okay, that is the third property. And for the fourth and fifth property are quite useful. If A is greater than B and C is positive, if you multiply both sides of inequality by the same constant C, which is a positive number, it will not affect the inequality sign. Okay. However, if you are to multiply both sides of inequality by a negative number, then the sign will change. Oh, the sign will change. From A greater than B, if you multiply both sides by C, where C is a negative number, the inequality sign will change. Okay? This is true also for division. That means A divided by C will be greater than B divided by C if C is positive and A divided by C is less than B over C if C is negative. Okay. Now, we are in a stage to actually solve the quadratic inequality. Okay. And basically, to solve the quadratic inequality using analytical approach, basically, is like this. If you have this curve like this, quadratic curve, okay, uh, for a simple example, I give this one, x minus 1 times x minus 5 on this quadratic curve. And so you will cut at two points here, 1 and 5. So if we want to solve this quadratic inequality, that is x minus 1 times x minus 5 less than 0, it means we are looking at the part of the graph which is below the x-axis. Okay? Below the x-axis. That means we are looking for x between 1 and 5. Because it's this part of the graph where the curve is below the x-axis. Likewise, if we want to solve x minus 1 times x minus 5 to be less than or equal to 0, that means we include the two points 1 and 5. So it means x is between 1 and 5 inclusive. Okay? And likewise, if you have x minus 1 times x minus 5 to be greater than 0, that means we are looking at the part of the graph that is above the x-axis. So that means x is less than 1 or x is greater than 5. And finally, if you are asked to solve this inequality, greater than 0. That means we include the two endpoints, the two points 1 and 5, as well as the portion of the graph that is above the x-axis. So it will be x less than equal 1 or x greater than equal 5. Okay? Now let's take a look at another approach that is using number line. In the case of number line method, it is very similar. The difference is that instead of drawing the graph, I just mark the two points. That is, that is the roots of the equation. 
Then after that, I identify a value that is to the right of 5. Suppose x equals 10, which is greater than 5. I substitute that value of 10 into this curve. I realize that 10 minus 1, which is 9, 10 minus 5 is 5. So 9 times 5 will be positive. So you put a positive sign here. That actually indicates that the curve is above the x-axis. Okay? Likewise, this will be negative and this will be positive. You'll realize after a while that it follows a certain pattern. Okay? So here, we are looking for, say, x minus 1 times x minus 5 is less than 0. Okay. That means that we are looking at this part of the graph that is negative. Okay. So therefore, we will have it as 1 less than x less than 5. If we are looking for x minus 1 times x minus 5 is greater than 0, so we are now looking at this part of the graph of the number line. So it will be x less than 1 or x greater than 5. Okay. Now we will look at three examples here how to show to you how we solve inequalities. Okay. Okay, let's take a look at the three inequality problems. The first one is to find the range of values of x that satisfy this inequality. Okay. So to solve this inequality, we first factorize okay. factorize it and then identify the roots of this equation, which is minus 3 and one third. Then you choose a value of x that is more than one third. Suppose x is 5. So you substitute x equal to 5 here and substitute x equal to 5 here. You realize that both terms will be positive. So the product of two positive numbers will be positive. But if this is plus, this must be minus and this must be plus. The reason is of course for quadratic curves, okay, you will always be either like this Okay, if there are two roots, or like this. So if it's like this, this portion will be plus, and this portion will be minus, and this portion is back to plus. If it's this type of shape, this portion is minus, this portion is plus, and this part is minus. So you can see that the sign alternates. Okay? So if it's plus, this one is minus, and this one is plus. And we are looking for greater than zero. That means we are looking at this part, as well as this part. So x is less than or equal to minus 3 or x is greater or equal to 1 third. Okay, so that will be first question. Let's take a look at the second one. The second problem part B we have x minus 3 squared less than equal x times x minus 3. Okay? So I can subtract both sides of the inequality by this term. And then you factorize by taking out x minus 3. Okay? And so we will have it as minus 3 times x minus 3 is less than equal to 0. Now, if we divide throughout by minus 3, you have to change the sign. And that leaves with only x greater than 3. That will be part B. Now, let's take a look at part C now. In part C, we are asked to solve this inequality. Let me erase this part of the board. Okay. So there are generally two parts of the inequality. The first part says that 3x minus 2 is less than minus 3x minus 1. And the second part of the inequality 
says that minus 3x minus 1 is less than equal to 2x squared. Okay. Now for the first part of the inequality, you can add both sides by 3x as well as adding both sides by 2. So you get 6x less than equal 1. x is, sorry, less than, less than 1. So x is less than 1 over 6. And for the second inequality, you can sub add both sides by 3x plus 1. You get 2x squared plus 3x plus 1 greater than 0. If you solve this inequality, you factorize it first. Okay. And then you use a number line. The roots are minus 1 and minus half. If you sub a number more than minus half, say minus, oh sorry, say zero, you realize that it's positive. And this will be negative, and this will be positive. So you want greater than zero, means that x is less than or equal to minus one, or x is greater or equal to minus half. Okay, so now we combine the inequality together. This is minus one, this is minus half, and this is one over six. The first inequality tells me x is less than 1 over 6. The second inequality tells me that x is less than or minus 1 or x is greater or equal to minus half. Okay. Putting them together will mean that x is less than or equal to minus 1. Sorry, this should be a closed circle that includes that point. Or is between minus half and 1 over 6. This is a closed circle and this is an open circle. That means it doesn't include 1 over 6. Okay? So this will give you the solution to this inequality. Okay? I hope these three examples gives you an idea of how to solve the inequality problems using number line. Okay? Thank you.